and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and in today's first impressions video we're going to be taking a look at this Tamiya's 1 to 350 scale Prince of Wales. So this kit dates back to 1985. Um, it, um, in 1986 there were some parts changed, not quite sure what those are, but quite often it's something minor like changing the stand or something like that. So essentially this kit has remained unchanged since 1985. So what we're going to be looking at today is a 35 year old kit, albeit a Tamiya kit. Now recently we've reviewed a couple of more recent Tamiya releases and we've even built one, the Megami. So it'll be interesting to see how far we think the newer kits have come from 35 years ago. So if you've been in the market to purchase um, a Prince of Wales kit in 1 to 350 scale, this has pretty much been your only option for quite some time. Um, however, there is imminently um, a Flyhawk uh, model to be released. Um, could come out any time. We're scheduled to come out in 2021, but um, as of the end of November 2021, that hasn't happened as yet. Uh, we know that many manufacturers are behind on their release schedules due to the pandemic. So um, this is pretty much the only boy in town and is probably why or one of the reasons why Tamiya has been continuing to chuck this out because no doubt it has continued to sell. So the Prince of Wales is a King George the fifth class battleship um, and how she came about was after the uh, Washington Naval Treaty and then the further um, Treaty of London uh, Britain was uh, limited to 35,000 tonnes in terms of its shipping and it was also limited to 14 inch guns, main guns. Um, and what basically happened is a couple of countries pulled out of those treaties. Um, the Admiralty was getting concerned about the ageing uh, fleet uh, of capital ships and so these ships were ordered but they were built within the treaty and pretty much Britain was the only country to keep within the confines of those treaties and by the time they realised that they were the only ones keeping to the treaty it, the, the design was too progressed for them to make any changes so that's how they came about in fact the Prince of Wales was going to be a king rather than a prince but due to the uh, abdication of the king, the, the name was swiftly changed. So she would have been uh, the King Edward rather than the Prince of Wales. Now, most people that know about the Prince of Wales know about her due to two actions, the Battle of the Denmark Strait, and then ultimately her sinking in the China Sea with the battleship Repulse. So actually the Prince of Wales's first action was while she was still in dry dock being fitted out. Um, the German Air Force um, bombed the docks in Camel Leads in Merseyside um, and some damage was done um, due to an exploding bomb going off next to her to um, the plating of the hull um, in the area of the bilge kill, just underneath the bilge kill, um, and she took in quite a bit of water. And unfortunately, her air, um, her compartment air pressure tests hadn't been completed, and her pump system was not operational. Something that would blight her later on again in her career. Um, and so she shipped in quite a lot of water, and there was a f fair amount of rework needed to be done just to get her ship shape. So she had 14 inch guns mounted in three turrets. She had two Mark III quadruple tur turrets, uh, one fore and one aft, and then she had a Mark II double turret um, um, at the front. Uh, now, a full broadside from the Prince of Wales um, was around about 7,200 kilograms in weight and she could fire one of those every 40 seconds. So quite a serious fighting machine. Uh, and that's just her primary weapons. Um, so she had all sorts of uh, uh, other guns on her. Um, 
anti-aircraft weapons as well, UP projectors. Um, so she was state of the art. Uh, the Prince of Wales, um, I, I suppose, holds the uh, dubious title of being the first battleship to be sunk by air, along with the battle cruiser Repulse. First two capital ships to be sunk by air, not from aircraft carriers, but from um, shore-based um, stations. Um, uh, she capsized and is currently still capsized at the bottom of the China Sea. So that's a bit about the Prince of Wales. Um, the artwork on the box is pretty much unchanged since 1985. Shows her in camouflage colours that you would have seen in um, the Pacific. Um, um, when we look at the sides, we've got um, paint schemes there. Three different paint schemes. We need to be very careful of that. Um, Tamiya are getting this wrong. Um, because after the Battle of the Denmark Strait, during um, repairs, um, there was a small number of alterations made, the most significant being to a radars. Um, so you won't be able to do um, Denmark Strait version and Pacific version without making changes to the parts. I think from um, uh, memory, for some reason this is in my memory, what you can build is the Pacific version, not the Denmark Strait version. Um, so uh, some modification inevitably will, will be required. But we've got three different paint schemes, um, which is lovely. Um, the sides of the box are both the same and just depict what it is. Um, I'm just looking for a kit number. Oh, kit number is 78011. Uh, and then on this other side, we've got a little bit of history, we've got a picture of a walrus, her coat of arms, and an overhead view of the ship. So let's have a look at what you get in the box. Uh, I guess before we have a look inside, I should say that in the UK, these commonly retail for around about £60, £65, pounds, um, which is half the price of... Um, uh, a Tamiya heavy cruiser, um, a bit more than half the price of a bigger ship, um, and that reflects their age, I guess. So let's see what we get for our money. So we get two instruction booklets, which is how they used to do it. Um, they don't do it this way anymore, but uh, one is in English and one is in Japanese, as I recall. Yeah. So um, I've never built the Prince of Wales. Um, I've built the sister ship, the um, King George, when I was a, a, a lad um, in the late 80s. Um, so it'll be nice to have a, um, a look at this and remind myself of what we get. So let's take a look at the instructions first. So we have an A4 landscape format instruction booklet that is stapled um, and in colour. We have um, a side profile of her with a camouflage scheme. Um, we've got some specification information at the top, and then we've got the um, box art um, at the bottom. Then as we turn the page, we get um, a decent amount of history, um, showing some pictures of the actual ship, which is always nice. So several pages um, showing a, a map there of her sinking in the Pacific. Um, so quite a detailed little history. And then on page five, we start construction, um, which starts with the um, A brackets for the shaft lines, propellers, and the single rudder. Um, there's a section at the top here which is a read before assembly, so some tips and bits and pieces. Um, and then once we've got the um, bits and bobs on the underneath of the hull, we're then straight into building the main armament. And um, this is the old way that they used to do it. So you can see that all the um, guns are attached together and clip into the roof of the turret and there is actually no floor to that turret um, so that's clipping in uh, rangefinders going on the, 
um, and that is it. Um, and then it tells you the various degrees that you can angle the gun at, which I guess is in line with the, with the real gun. Then as we turn over, we have what appears to be three deck sections and it's telling us to drill some holes where marked out and then it's actually getting us to build the guns and some of the deck fittings in place before we've fitted it onto the hull which is interesting quite a few rafts there I see um, and then we've got the capstans going on molded on chain by the looks of it um, we've got some booms and winches going on and instructions for painting the molded in cable reels then it's telling us to tape in the stern deck um, and we're adding um, some some pieces to that as we put it in shows you the side on picture there of it fitted and then we're doing the same with the centre section of the deck which includes the catapult area um, outside of the hangars so catapults in the centre of the ship because it's the the place with the least movement so makes sense and then we're taping in the bow section bow deck fore deck and yep yeah, then we're going on to superstructure so this is effectively the boat deck here on top of this superstructure got uh, some ventilator units that go at the back there very similar to the King George V I recognize some of these um, then we're building up the various ships boats launches and and so on several of those gives you the arrangement there um, which is nice you've got a nice top view of where they should be placed in relation to other things so that's nicely done um, more rafts bit more drilling to be done um, and then it shows you placing them I like the fact that they highlight in blue where the parts are being landed that works quite nicely I'd forgotten that they do that and as we pass over we're now on um, step 11 so we've got more superstructure this is the forward superstructure so um, uh, this deck is going to be the start of the platform to which the bridge and bits and pieces will will build up from um, so we've got um, that going on we've got uh, the platform for uh, secondary armament then we've got um, more of the bridge construction with the observation deck plastic ladders um, just as Tamiya still do today and we've got um, some anti-aircraft gun tubs um, what looks like the actual bridge going in there then we've got Admiral's Bridge and more deck areas more. ventilators more plastic ladders um, and we've got more dinghies this time being mounted on the bulkheads so uh, the, the instructions are nice and clear um, easy to follow less cluttered than modern time your instructions to be fair um, you can see where the parts are going and they're showing you the side views there's some written instruction but less than you probably get in modern time your instructions but it's all clear and easy to follow I, I quite like these instructions to be honest then we're building up the two um, funnels um, both of which have platforms different types of platforms on them as you can see um, looks like we've got some trunking there and looks like we've got solid caps, funnel caps. Then we're placing those more uh, life rafts. Um, not quite sure what that is, radar maybe. Um, and then we're on to um, 5.25 inch secondary armament. So we're building up the turret again, fixed barrels, but they are movable. 
um, and then we're placing them, then we're building up the um, anti-aircraft guns there, um, which are then being placed as well. So three by the looks of it. We flap over and we've got rangefinders being made up, um, deck guns and the search lights, and then they're all being placed uh, along with um, some form of boom or minor crane that goes against the superstructure there. Um, yeah, shows you the positions there, so that's handy. Got some davits going in and the lights. So what's that, 18 steps. Then step 19, we're going back to the outside of the hull. So anchors, uh, jack staffs, um, quite a few deck guns on the, on the stern there in little gun tubs. Again, another feature of these, these class of ships. Then we're building the walrus, um, showing her in her camouflage uh, which is appropriate for that period in the war. They had been silver in the interwar years, but by this time, new ones were being painted, although some ships still had silver ones early in the war, um, and they got painted up at refits. So we do have um, cradles to allow them to be mounted on. I don't know if we get one or two. It doesn't say make two, so possibly one. Shows you a couple of optional configurations, one for takeoff and one for stowed. Also doesn't look like we can fold the wings, which is a pity. Um, it looks nice with folded wings, I think. Step 21, we're building masts and cranes. So that looks like the uh, main mast main cranes, more range finders, then we're fitting it all in. Um, and then assembly of Japanese bomber. Well, that's interesting. Uh, then we are at Resi. Now that's better than a, than a modern Tamiya kit. A modern Tamiya kit does not give you rigging instructions. But this is telling you to make rigging from stretch sprue, showing you the position of flags, battle ensign, and so on. So I like that. That's an improvement on the, on the old instructions. Building up of the stand, the what I like to call the classic stand, which is quite a bit taller than the, um, the two stands that came after that. And then you've got final 26 steps, mounter on a stand. Painting instructions and paint shout outs. So not a massive uh, number of paints there, that, but possibly more than you'd expect for a ship. But obviously we've got camouflages on there and paints for the Japanese bomber, which adds to the list of paints. Sprues. And that takes us to the end of the instructions. So plastic wise, the first thing out of the box is the one piece hull. Um, so you've got no options here. If you want to do this waterline, you are going to have to get a saw out and hack away. Um, so actually considering the age, and I did buy this um, as, a, as a new kit. So it's not one that's been bought off eBay and been knocking around for many years this is a, a, a brand new uh, purchase um, it it's actually a really good um, clean hull given the age of the of the tooling um, so we've not got any um, sort of flash or lumpiness to the molding like we had with the um, ICM mark graph that we reviewed re uh, fairly recently We've got a mould seam along the bottom, but we would expect that, and actually it's not too heavy. Um, it has marked out the boot line, and again, um, that's not too heavy, so um, you could probably get away with using that without removing it. The um, scuttles are not too distorted, Ever so slightly distorted, maybe, but 
not so bad that you'd need to actually modify them it's marginal if anything there is no wriggles above them so there's no um, gutters above them at all and drilling them out will be a bit of a problem because this top row is right smack bang on line with where the deck goes in so um, yeah that's that's worth noting when I look to the stern area, I think that's where we've got more problems. Um, I suspect that those aren't right. The um, moulding process at the time has dictated that those um, are quite wide. I imagine that those were single and single flutes, and we've got to cut away some material there. I am going to guess. Um, the same with the bilge keels, they look a bit chunky. Now, they are solid as I look inside the hull, so you could do some work to thin them out if you wanted. Um, but the hull shape seems okay. Um, there's no holes in the paravane uh, mounting point at the front of the bow there, but the stern has a little bit of sink in it, but not much. However, Easy to fit, fix, would need fixing though, just a little bit there. The shape of the stern is correct, however, um, yeah, it. that's not a bad hull, not a bad hull at all. Um, the, what look like holes for the anchors are actually very deep recesses and the anchors will, will glue into those, but it, it wouldn't take much to open those up, correct the direction of them uh, and be able to thread chain through if you wanted to show an anchor part dropped or something like that. So yeah, I think that's that's not a bad hull, uh, not a bad hull at all. And inside it does say Tamiya 1985. Uh, so unlike the Yamato, it doesn't have anything in there for putting battery packs and bits and pieces like that. So next we've got the deck portions and there's three of these all in the same bag. Um, and what a busy um, deck we've got. We've got the focal area there. We've got a moulded in uh, breakwater, um, primary breakwater, secondary breakwater. Uh, and when you consider that this was tooled in 1985, actually, um, this would have been uh, this would have been wowing people on release because the detail is really quite nice. It's uh, crisp and thin, and it it does look the part, although. Uh, the angle is, is wrong and it is um, bereft of any detail on the front. It, 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 you know, it, it does look right. It, you know, you could get away with it. Uh, the deck, as we'd expect for the age, is um, raised deck, um, but it's done very well. Um, and you could paint that and give that a wash and it'd look, come up all right. We have um, moulded in stud chain, which is very fine, and I would suggest nicely to scale. Um, the um, horse pipe openings would need drilling out, um, but otherwise, um, all of that detail is quite nicely done. We have cable reels moulded in, but that's exactly how they still do them today. I mean, we were taking them off the Mogami. Um, done in exactly the same fashion. The difference is these are smooth in the middle rather than having any grooves in to simulate um, rope or cable or hose. So we would remove those. There's lots of little flat rectangles. Some of those will be um, mounting points for other things. Some of them won't. Um, there is no detail on them whatsoever. Um, they're just square blocks, but there's lots of them to paint in. Uh, we've got some form of boom or rig or something like that that is on the deck there. I wonder if that's for the power of veins, possibly. Um, then we've got the secondary um, breakwaters, and we can see the limitation of the moulding gives us this sort of triangle of plastic which detracts a little bit, so you'd want to be getting a knife in there and thinning that down. Um, some more cable reels and some more lockers and bits and pieces. 
but a busy deck um, and if you wanted to build it straight out of the box with a bit of paint and some wash and, and what have you that would look pretty cool actually so if we do the center deck next there's a lot less on here but we do have some molded in lockers again with no detail and some more cable or hose reels um, there is a, a rectangular recess there to allow the catapult section to go in um, and then we've got mounting points for some uh, secondary armament that goes on there there is there's nothing underneath uh, I forgot to mention on the uh, bow there is markings underneath for drill positions and then finally if we look at the stern deck again a relatively uh, busy stern there's again drilling instructions underneath there um, some of those will be for the um, gun tubs and bits and pieces that need to be added um, yeah some of it looks a little bit oversized you know these these things here the little bollards they look uh, they look oversized and may, might want removing and a little bit of wire or something putting in their place but otherwise yeah so let's imagine the deck There you go, quite a nice size little ship. Next we have the stand, so we've got two sprues that are identical and basically make up two halves of the stand. The, the main feature of um, this particular style of stand that Tamiya did was that the um, top of the stand that the ship actually comes into contact with is totally flat, it's not curved for the hull. There is quite a bit of ejector pin marks to deal with um, to clean this up, but um, otherwise looks okay. This little bit here gives you um, a double um, a double stand for the name plaque, so you'll have one on each side. But yeah, other than the clean up of the ejector pin marks. Um, yeah, that's all good. So next we have um, sprue B uh, and that contains some um, turrets. We've got the funnel on there. We've got the A brackets for the um, shaft lines, um, some of the guns, rudder and um, some bases and ventilators and bits and pieces. So as I look at this, um, if we start with the main turrets, so this is all the primary armament here. There is rivet detail on there, which is quite nicely done, but only on the tops. There's nothing on the sides other than uh, vertical ladders. There is nothing on the sides. So probably something they couldn't do at that time. Um, the There is some detail on the funnels. You've got the little lines that denote the handrails. Um, you've got a couple of little hatches which probably look like they're in line with the platforms um, and some trunking. The two halves of the rudder have nothing on them so there's no zinc anodes or anything like that. Um, the shaft lines in this are plastic, not the metal ones that you now get in the Tamiya kits. Um, and We've got a jack staff there, which is very nicely moulded, nice and crisp. Very nicely moulded, actually. Um, and so is the other one. Quite thick connection points, but shouldn't be a problem to clean up. Um, more shaft lines. We've got the this double barrels for that gun, uh, but none of the others. And yeah, we've got solid ends, which I expected. So there'll be some drilling out to be done. The funnel caps are also solid. So some clever painting required, unless you can find a way of replacing them. 
Then we've got the bases for the funnels, they look okay, and bases for the ventilators, and these are the ventilators, and I've got to say, it's quite finely detailed, so it's it's nicely done. And again, given the age of the of the tooling, the moulding is nice and crisp, there is no flash, I can't find any sink. Yeah, it is it's well done. It is well done. There is Quite a heavy seam halfway through the A bracket. It's not uncommon that, so quite a bit of clean up needed on that. Um, the one noticeable thing is these platforms that ha that have guns on them. There is absolutely no detail whatsoever on the sides. Um, so the fact that they've made them all is one mould has meant that they can't put doors, scuttles, cable runs, junction boxes, um, hose reels, anything that might be along there isn't so that would have been they would have been quite busy one way or another um, we do have a section of bulkhead here which has some scuttles in um, but that stands out spruce C and we have some um, of the bulkheads for some of the superstructure and we have got some detail on here we've got more vertical ladders I think that is supposed to be a watertight door. Um, it's not very convincing. We've got some hatches, got some scuttles. The scuttles on here, however, look dreadful. They're very elongated um, because they've been moulded in on this on this angle. Really, it would have been better to have that as a separate part. Um, yeah, you're going to have to fill and redrill that. Then we've got some form of door with a hinge, which doesn't look too bad. Um, these doors have actually got some of the latches on, so they look even better again. Um, again, no wriggles on the scuttles. Um, and we've and that's it for detail, and no detail on these ends, so I know there's stuff missing. Um, we've got the A-frames for the masts, which make up the mast tripods. They're nicely done, although there is a big lumpy on there which has got no detail on whatsoever so whatever that is it's very simplified um, we've got some plastic ladders which I have to say as plastic ladders go look all right obviously we won't be using them um, but um, yeah they're, they're all right they're not too chunky um, then we've got anti-aircraft gun mounts the mounts already in which makes the molding more simplified so that and, and it looks quite chunky and heavy um, we've got the um, hanger doors both of them in the closed position so no option for open um, which is which is a shame um, more superstructure more ventilators um, we've got bridge roof um, bridge looking forward which has got again we've got scuttles in there but nothing else wind deflectors aren't too bad actually we've got some nice detail on there they'll look all right under paint you could get away with those and again no detail on the actual walls of the um, base of these uh, gun mounts although the splinter shields are quite nicely done. Okay, sprue D next, we have two of these. Uh, and on here we've got um, an arrangement of uh, armament and some ship's boats. And again, everything is nice and crisp. I mean. This is as good as, or even better than some kits are when they when they first come out. Um, um, we've got guns there that go inside of here. They're quite nicely done. They're nice and thin, although not open. Um, some more plastic ladders. The pyrovanes. And those pyrovanes look as good as they do these days. Um, we've got propellers that look a bit heavy, um, but and a bit basic but and quite a bit of seam on them but we'll um, 
will look all right cleaned up, I guess, um, but they are a little bit thick. Rangefinders have a little bit of flash on them, but not much. They should clean up okay. Um, the cranes are solid as we would have expected, but they do have a level of detail to them. Um, on the, you know, they could easily have been completely smooth on the top and bottom, but they're not. So that's not bad. We've got some detail on the tops of the turrets, but nothing on the sides again. So there's no entrance doors or anything like that. Then the anti-aircraft gun platforms, pom-pom platforms. Uh, this should be like um, a metal handrail. They've molded it as make it look like a splinter shield. Uh, makes them look a bit odd. So I'm not a fan of that. There's not much detail on there. There is some ejector pin marks though to clean off. Um, winches look nice. Um, the searchlights have separate backs rather than separate fronts. So um, actually that might make them easier to paint. We've got some more range finders. Then we've got another main gun, solid as we'd expect. Ships boats are nice and smooth, no, no clinker, um, but they look okay. Um, there's no detail at all on these tops, however. Um, although on the larger motor launch, we have got the little grab rails and some uh, deck corking raised lines marked out. So that can look all right. We do have a separate um, cable reel there. It's not got the grooves on, but it's separate. So even 35 years ago, Tamiya could do it. They just didn't. So that mentality is not changed of, well, we'll do some, but not all of them. Um, some of these parts are a little bit flashy now, but not too bad. That's the base for the cranes. Um, a, a bit blocky, but uh, not too bad. We've got smaller cable reels there, maybe hose reels and the smaller search lamps which look okay actually um, and then we've got the pom-poms and you know the guns are really fine on that that's as good as you get these days yeah they look all right anchor's got the right shape to it again a little simplified but it's all there Okay, sprue E now, and we've got more of the um, superstructure. Again, we've got doors on there. These are quite chunky, actually, these ones. They stand quite proud from the bulkhead. Um, and scuttles, but, but nothing else. Um, the steel decks are completely, totally smooth. Um, and we've got some moulded in ladders, just like they've done recently. So you can see, Tamiya haven't travelled that far. Other than the technology of tooling, the actual thought process of what they're going to do and how they're going to do it hasn't really changed in 35 years. Uh, we've got Starfish there, which is actually quite nicely done. Obviously, it lacks the detail and finesse of uh, etched one, but it looks okay. Um, gun tubs. Not too bad, not too thick. Um, yeah, they, they're okay. I keep checking behind. If you, if you look on a Tamiya kit, if you look behind the sprue letter, you'll always see some letters. Uh, and the PS means polystyrene. So um, that means you can make stretch, uh, stretch sprue out of this. Um, and I was particularly looking where we've got, because we've got, masts on here and yard arms which are separate as in in the more modern kits it's a harder plastic um, so it's not the polystyrene and you can't make stretch stretch sprue from that because it gives off all sorts of nasties um, so we've got 
We've got a deck here which has got ejector pin marks in, um, a steel deck no doubt but has no texture on it at all and then we have superstructure here which has got no detail at all and some big lumps and that's that's all there is. I'm not sure what these rectangles are for but they've got a serrated top so that looks a bit odd as well. And it's the same here, great big solid featureless lump, no detail. There is no side moulding skill at this point for Tamiya, so it just misses everything. And, the, and it's all moulded in, it looks heavy, it looks bland, and it's, it's not up to a modern standard, it's certainly not up to a trumpeter standard, um, and it's, it's not as good as the more modern Tamiya kits, but it's not that far away from it, to be honest from the, a, modern, a more modern Tamiya kit. But as we've seen there, they don't keep up um, pace with the modern ship kits um, at the moment. Okay, sprue F. We've got um, the catapult area which has got um, the wood deck uh, depicted and the base of the catapult and actually that looks quite nice got some blobs of plastic there which must be lockers or something um, we've got the steel deck um, for the boat deck here I mean the boat cho chocks aren't too bad no different than most plastic kits even even current release ones obviously no texturing on the deck but equally no, no sinking or anything to correct, so you can just paint that and, and away you go. A um, couple more ship's boats, and I have to say, I think the ship's boats generally are better than on the Megami kit. Um, there's a, just because the moulded on shocks are done much better, they're thinner, they're less noticeable. I, I, think, I think they've done a better job of the ship's boats than they have done recently. Um, we've got this platform here, which has absolutely no features on it at all. In fact, the only thing that attracts your eye is the amount of sink in it, which is a lot. Um, we've got some mast tops there, which are nicely depicted, another yard arm. Then we've got the two nameplates for the stand, uh, and it says British Battleship Prince of Wales. I would like it to have said HMS, but equally it doesn't say Tamiya and it doesn't say 1350 scale, so I'll take that, I'll take that. Um, be nice, should be okay to paint that up. We've got a deck gun there, some um, ventilation pipe, totally featureless rangefinder. I mean, it's just a block. Um, and then another mast and these two are, things are the turntables on the catapults tracks so again a bit simplified to say the least And then finally, we have sprue G. Um, and so we have some more search lamps, um, which we've already seen. It's the same thing with separate backs, some plastic ladders, and I think these are walkways that go over the catapult, but there's no steps on them or anything. It's just a strange lump. Um, that is deck extensions, I think anti-aircraft guns go on there. Then we've got the walrus, and we have only the one wal walrus, but it's not bad, it's got some texture on the wings. Um, there's a little bit of texture on the tail plane, but there is nothing on the side of the aircraft at all. I think in the light I can just about make out windows, I think. Um, and then we've got the round dustbin lid depicted on the top. Uh, we've got the engine, 
and we've got some finely molded um, wing struts and the floats for them. I think that might be wheels that stick out of there. We seem to have three, not quite sure why. Um, and the tail. So that's all walrus. Then we've got the Japanese aircraft and and they look truly awful. They are absolutely soft molded. There is some panel lines on there but hardly any. I, they just don't look very nice. They, yeah, don't like either of those. I think, I think that one's probably worse than that one. You've got engine bays that glue on underneath, the engine nacelles I should say, and both of them have the wheels down and, well, they don't look good at all. They look like some strange lollipop hanging out the bottom. Um, yeah, a bit odd. Uh, we've got some deck guns with gun shields and the gun shields aren't too bad. Neither are the guns. You've got some big ejector pin marks on them, which is a disappointment, but other than that, they're okay. Um, lots of all these rafts for building up and some more gun tubs and the davits which don't have any hook or anything hanging off but are quite thinly moulded so yeah okay. You can see what I mean about the aircraft it's it's so softly moulded it just doesn't look right and look at those wheels. So that is it for the plastic kit.